In this video, we're talking about why it's typically a bad idea to pay rent or pay for a mortgage when you're in your early 20s. Let's get into it. What's up, everyone? It's Jonathan Farber. I was able to achieve financial freedom at 27 years old to the tune of around $12,000 per month. Welcome or welcome back to the channel where I post videos every week on the latest strategies and trends on real estate, creative passive income, and productivity. If you get any value from these videos or you're interested in these topics, please consider giving a like and a subscription. It shows me that these videos help and shows me which topics I should make more content about. For this week's shout out, I need to shout out Chris Nolan. He was one of the first mastermind members and he's doing awesome things in the lending world and short-term rental world. If you wanna get a shout out in my next video, put a picture of the YouTube video on your Instagram story and tag me and I will put you in the queue. As always, timestamps will be in the comments below as your time is valuable, so let's get into it. This video is solely for people who wanna become financially free at a young age. If you aren't one of those people and you plan to work a job for someone else until you're 65, you might wanna keep scrolling. And here's why. For most people, their biggest expense is either a car or housing expense. And the problem with that is then usually after food, fun, and maybe a vacation, there's not much left to make investments or better yet, buy property. And did you know that owning real estate has had the highest correlation to wealth of any business type in United States history? I promise we're going to get back to the part of why paying for mortgage or paying for rent a lot of times doesn't make sense, but I just want to drive this point home. According to a CNBC article on wealth building and home ownership published in 2019, homeowners in the U.S. had a median net worth of 255000 while renters, on the other hand, had a net worth of just $6,300. Like, this is insane. Like, if that fact doesn't inspire you to start thinking about real estate investing and creating long-term wealth, I don't know what will. And mainly this happens, this big net worth jump, for a few reasons. The biggest reason is because homes have always gone up in value forever. And while that does not mean that they will always be at a higher price when you need to sell it, it just means that over the history of home values, they have always increased over time. The other important reason is that thanks to the way that our Federal Reserve and mortgage system works out, you can use leverage to buy property in ways you cannot with any other asset types like stocks or crypto. You can buy a property with 5% down, and if that property appreciates 5%, you just made 100% on your equity. Again, this is not possible with any other types of investment strategies. And that's all great, net worth, but we haven't even talked about the tax benefits or the benefits of cash flow. We're strictly talking about net worth and equity. Anyway, I digress. You understand a few reasons why it makes sense to buy real estate, but now let's get back to what I mean when I say it's crazy to have a mortgage payment or rent payment, especially at the beginning of your investing career, and how to avoid having them. This happens thanks to a strategy called house hacking. If you learn nothing else from me or my content, it could be just this strategy. The concept consists of buying a property to live in, and because you're living in it, you can put very little money down, typically three to 5%. And from there, what you can do is just rent out the other rooms or units to friends or roommates. And what's really cool is you can do this once a year if you organize your finances correctly and find good deals. And a strategy that works really great with something like this is starting with a single family home and working your way up to a duplex or a quadplex on your second or third purchase. By doing this, you also learn a lot more about real estate as you go and you can start with smaller amounts. So if you make a mistake, it's not as big of a deal. And by the time you get to your third, fourth, or fifth property, you can start pulling tax-free equity out of the first ones and snowballing money to reinvest in new properties. Definitely a little bit more complicated, but we can cover that in another video. But at that point, you might decide you want to get into bigger properties, five to 50 units, and you have the experience to do it. I guarantee that if you do this strategy or a version of this strategy in your first five to seven years out of college alone, you won't have to work work much longer after that. And it's mainly because you can turn each property you move out of into a regular rental or an Airbnb. These properties will be generating tax-free income after you move out of them. And if you purchase right and keep the property in good condition, it should continue to appreciate. But what do most people do? They finish high school or college and start paying high rent to experience life or start saving 20% down to buy their dream home. Then they probably get a dog or start having kids. And that's great if that's truly what makes you happy and it's what you've always wanted then go do that. But if you're here watching this video on financial freedom, in my opinion, and based on my goals, I think you should buy the house or rent a great apartment with cash flow when you're already financially free and properties are paying for that. And yes, house hacking does have cons. The main one being that you either have roommates or you live next to your tenants. But as the saying goes, life is a series of trade-offs. And in this case, it's about making a small housing trade-off for your first few years out of college to hopefully live 40 to 50 years completely financially independently after that. Like, it still really bothers me when I see someone I know who doesn't like their job go buy their dream home at 25 years old and lease or buy a car that they really can't afford. Those decisions 
become the noose that keeps people in jobs they don't like their entire lives. Don't believe me? I have a good friend, he's been on this podcast. His name is Chris Montez. He's been doing this strategy effectively for four years, house hacking. Now, in addition to doing the house hacking, he's getting into Airbnb. And now after building his base with house hacking, he purchased two Airbnb high cash flowing properties. And by doing that, he's about to become comfortably financially free and able to do whatever he wants every day. No boss, no job, no forecast calls, none of that stuff. So all that said, how do you start house hacking? The first step is to always get a base education in the area. This can be from YouTube videos like this, Facebook groups, podcasts, and other social medias. After a base level education, it makes sense to speak with a lender to make sure you can qualify for low money down loans that usually go with house hacking. If you do a little Googling or a little networking, a decent lender will be able to tell you in about 10 minutes if you can qualify for a low money down primary home loan or house hack. And they'll tell you approximately your ceiling for purchase price. The next part is about picking an area. Some areas are just more conducive to this because there are cash flow markets. I've made other videos on the channel this, we can link them below, but typically outside of cities or away from the coast have higher cash flow. An easy way to know if it could be a potential area is to see if the typical rents for the property are 1% of the purchase price or at least around it. This is a good high level rule of thumb that the numbers could work for a break even house hack and a cash flowing rental. And if you live in a city where this doesn't work, there's almost always a city or area within 60 to 90 minutes of most cities. I'd be really surprised if there wasn't. But then that just comes back to how bad you want it. Some people aren't willing to move out of a city to an area that they could do house hacking. Next is about analyzing deals that hit the market. For those that follow the channel, you know I typically give my tools away. So if you're interested in getting one of those, you just need to take two screenshots. One of you commenting the word on this video template and also a screenshot of a subscription to this channel. If you just DM me those on Instagram or Facebook, I will send you the link to the tools. In the beginning, you want to be analyzing a lot of deals. The goal is not to find a deal quickly. The goal is to be able to tell the difference between a good and a bad deal. And most importantly, to be able to know a good from a bad deal quickly. The more deals you analyze, the more deals you can make offers on. And the more deals you can make offers on, the more deals you get accepted and closed. Then after those steps, I think it makes sense to connect with a realtor. And I know this comes a little later than some people might recommend but it's because I think it's important to know what you're doing before you speak to a realtor, or at least have a base knowledge. Realtors will take you way more seriously when you know what you're talking about, meaning they will send you better deals since they don't think you're wasting their time. Once they start sending you more deals, you continue analyzing them, maybe walk them or get pictures if you live from distance, and you start making offers. After that, hopefully you start getting under contract, and then you can fully conduct due diligence and then close on the property. From there, you find roommates or tenants, either either people you know or people you don't. In my opinion, it's always better with people you know or can get referred. And then you move in, start collecting rent and voila. You're house hacking, you're living for free, or maybe making money to live. So just to recap, most people cannot save money because they're paying a lot for their house or car. The average net worth of someone who owns a home for someone who doesn't is 20 to 30 times greater. And if you do this strategy, house hacking, for a few years after high school or college, your entire financial trajectory can change. And if you do it longer than that, you should comfortably be financially free by 30. And yes, it's a slightly lower quality of life than renting or buying buying your dream home. But for people that understand this, it's an acceptable trade for people who want the long-term benefits. So that's pretty much it guys. That's a high level story or explanation of why the majority of people would be way better off financially if they didn't pay a mortgage or high rent payment out of college. And as always, I wanna make sure you guys have what you need to be successful. So either drop a comment or a question below. I answer every single one of them on the YouTube channel. And also if there's any other videos you wanna see made or topics, just let me know. I wanna make sure that we're making this valuable and and the topics are covering things that you guys want to see. And lastly, like I mentioned, if you're looking for those templates, just send me the comment screenshot and the sub screenshot, and I will get you any analysis tools that we talk about on the channel. As always, I appreciate you guys being here. You could be doing anything with your time right now. So I hope you got value out of it, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.